Hey guys, I'm Adam Hayes with Team 200 and welcome to my man cave. Yep, that's Adam Hayes, owner of the Moon Guide, team member of Team 200. 14 archery bucks over 170 inches, four of them being over 200. You get an exclusive look at his trophy room to hear some of his favorite stories and favorite bucks. Here we go. So this is the uh, whitetail wall. We've got 14 bucks with a bow over 170. Four of those have cracked 200. Most of those deer have been killed on the red moon. Most of these bucks are from Ohio. We've got some uh, Illinois deer, some Kansas deer, a couple from Canada mixed in. I guess we we're gonna start the one at the top was really my first big buck that I killed that was, you know, a specific animal that I was after. First Ohio Big Bucks Club deer that I killed. It was a buck I found in the summer and um, just kind of watched him all summer, pinpointed what he was doing and ended up killing him first week of season. And that was kind of like the light bulb moment for me. The one right below him, big white eight point that I killed one of the first years I filmed for TV, 160 inch deer that I shot at 60 yards. Heart shot him, probably the best shot I'll ever make on a whitetail. He's like 21 inches inside. He's got four tines over 13 inches. Just a, he was just an impressive animal, big body. Got a couple other good deer up here. This one to the right, that deer actually scores over 120 without any of his tines with just the uh, spread the main beams and the mass he's got 29 inch main beams he carries the mass all the way out i think he had close to 45 50 inches of mass just super heavy this velvet deer was from saskatchewan i shot that deer one of the first years filming two first and only velvet buck I ever killed early september hunting a red moon up there that deer i think when I killed him that year was one of the biggest deer ever killed on video in velvet. This buck right here was also from the same farm in Saskatchewan. Carrot River area is kind of uh, where the cropland stops and the provincial forest started. We were hunting the last farm on the road and the deer just came out of the forest like ants. I mean, you know, you could see a hundred deer in an evening driving the roads in that area just loaded with deer. Couple notable deer from Kansas, this big eight point. I was 178 inch deer. I actually killed that Kansas deer, this big 10 point that was 170s. And then my biggest buck ever in Kansas, 221, back to back to back. We knew about these two bucks, but the, uh, the big non-typical, that's a deer that just showed up out of nowhere. We got pictures of him late summer, early season. And actually a few guys got to hunt that deer before I ever made it out there, but he was showing up real consistently. It was all at night. And I kind of waited until first week of November when we had a good red moon coming up and hunted hard for a week out there, even though it was super hot, mid eighties all week, but it just kept cooling off a little bit each day while I was out there. And um, the red moon hit the end of the week and I shot him, I think on, I want to say it was November 6th. You couldn't design a better spot for a big deer. It was where a big creek intersected with two fence lines. And there was just like five different directions in that bottom that a deer could come from. And he snuck in on me two hours before dark, wasn't even expecting anything to be moving yet. Came in downwind of me and basically was watching him through the grade of my tree stand. He was that close and shot him at like maybe five yards from the base of my tree. And I'll tell you what, that's when you're in bow range of an animal of that caliber and you can hear him breathing and just dead calm. I mean, it's just, it was such an epic evenings hunt after hunting for that deer all week and just i'll never forget that probably the most exciting hunt of my life but i mean the big eight you know one of the biggest eight points i've ever killed out there that was a amazing hunt for that deer early november moose is one of the biggest non-typicals i've ever killed killed him here in central ohio I actually had the sheds off that buck from the year before he would have been 200 inches this year but he broke off a third main beam on the right side that was over 20 inches and after i shot him i spent the whole season looking for that part of his rack that broke off and i could never find it but I had thousands of pictures of that deer and i know you know how long that part of his rack was so Adding that to what the what the rack scored, you know, that would have been my that would have been another 200 inch deer. That would have been my fourth back then, which would have, would have made five total. But yeah, he's just an amazing deer, city deer. I don't think that deer ever saw 
a corn field, a soybean field. I mean, he was dodging cars and going in between apartment buildings and living on a golf course part of his life. And just, if you saw where, where that animal lived, you just surprised that he could, he could survive. And I wish I had got him aged because I would, I would bet that deer was nine or 10 years old, just, a, just an old warrior. This buck right here is my biggest Illinois buck to date, 187. I shot him a few years ago. That buck in particular was was a deer I chased for a few years. I'd actually chased a bigger one the year before that the neighbors killed that was um, ended up being 232. But we shot, I shot him the following season in a food plot. Got pictures of him, daylight, the day I got into town. Did a hanging hunt that night and killed him and best Best deer I've ever killed in Illinois to date. So this buck right here, I nicknamed the Dark Horse. He had a really, um, really dark cape. That's not the original cape. It got ruined, but um, he, had, he had hardly any white on him. And that deer was a pretty cool story. I went in to film that buck in the uh, beans in the summertime and snuck into my tree stand to kind of do some observation just, you know, a few weeks before season opened, trying to pinpoint him. And he ended up standing up in the beans 30 yards from my tree stand. I could have actually shot him, got to watch, you know, firsthand what he was doing and ended up killing him early season. But he's a 178 inch deer and he's basically a typical eight point with a one little G4 and a split off his brow. Caribou buck, I shot that buck in December one year right after gun season. Had never seen him before, was watching a picked cornfield, got some really cold weather and a bunch of deer come out and he marched out into the field and he just ran every buck in the field off and I ended up snort wheezing at him because he was acting so aggressively and he came all the way across the field right to me. That was a 182 inch deer. This was the last big buck I killed in Ohio a couple years ago. I'd watched that deer for four years. Great typical frame. The year I killed him I was actually leaving for Canada in two days Hadn't even seen him yet. He pops up on camera one evening, broad daylight, wind in his face, 30 yards from one of my tree stands. I'm like, he's making a mistake during daylight. I need to get in there and get him. So day before I left for Canada, I went in and shot him and actually made a marginal shot on him because he was bugging out. He had caught some movement and was trying to get out and I managed to get an arrow in him and it wasn't a perfect shot. He got out into a CRP field, huge CRP field, and we lost him. I got up into uh, Alberta and actually called a good buddy of mine that edits Team 200 for me. Had him go over to that farm. He'd made it about 300 yards, but expired. And it's, you know, he's 100 and almost 180 inch deer. And then over here, got my four 200s. This was my first one. That's, that deer scored 201. Like I said, first 200 I ever killed. I didn't, I wasn't hunting him because he was 200 inches. I, he just happened to be 200 by the time I killed him because I chased him for three seasons. But that was the first really big buck that I really focused on hunting him during the red moon and waited for everything to be perfect before I dove in and shot him the first night. And I'll never forget that night either. I was set up in a big oak overlooking a big scrape on his scrape line and right about sunset, cracked the horns together thinking he was still laying down and I like to rattle when I know bucks are still laying down because I think it's easier to get them to come your way if they're laying down as opposed to if they're already up moving in a different direction but and I knew I was within 150 yards of his bedding area tucked up next to the CRP and I heard deer come crashing into the woods I turned and a little buck came trotting up the trail stopped in the scrape right below me and I was like man I thought it was the big one coming I heard something else and he was right behind him it didn't even look real how big it was I'd never seen a deer that size and when I shot he kind of dropped down into the creek and started walking away from me like he wasn't even hurt you know thinking back on it, it was a liver shot so he was going to make it a ways and that creek went forever and I was like man I'm not letting this deer get away so I gave him about 20 minutes I had plenty of daylight I got down and started following uh, the creek in the direction he went and I got maybe a hundred yards and I could see his rack sticking up above the bank and I just knocked an arrow and eased around the corner and we kind of our eyes met when when I got around the corner and he actually stood up and started coming my way I put another one in him and put him down but I'll never forget that that was that was a pretty intense evening my second 200 was 203 and some change 
I actually have a shed off that buck that my, that my lab found the year before I killed him, which I think he was actually bigger the year before, but I named him Cody's buck. My chocolate lab Cody picked up the shed. Walking through the woods shed hunting and she kept banging into my leg and I was finally looked down to see what the heck she was doing carrying this thing in her mouth. But yeah, 203 and then a few years later I shot my third. That's 208. Just a giant six by six with split brows. I'd had a I had a buddy in town hunting the year before in January. Came up from Tennessee late season and that deer came strolling in and he missed him at 20 yards. And I said, man, I'm sorry, but your hunt's over. <laughs> had no idea that deer was in the area. Spent all summer trying to get an eyeball on him. Never saw him. No trail camera pictures. And then it was, I want to say it was late October. Um, there were a couple cornfields on that block came down. And right at last light, he popped out in the back of one of those cornfields, pushing some does around and came out of a CRP field directly behind it that I didn't have a stand set up on. So I put the lone wolf stand and some sticks on my back the next afternoon, went in there actually with the wind at my back. I didn't have a perfect wind, but I knew the wind wasn't blowing into his bedding area. Second trail I found, I thought it was, it was the spot, hung my stand and sticks. And right before dark, I watched him get up about 90 yards from me and came right to me. And I mean, went in the next morning, found him <clears throat> not, uh, not far from where he was bedded, actually. Probably one of my favorite deer. Just he, hard to design a nicer looking typical rack like that. Just a beautiful animal. And then we got my buck from last year that I shot in Illinois. It's actually, this was actually the uh, number two buck that I was after last year. Had a giant eight point with a big drop that I had an encounter with early season and that was the last time I saw him. Completely disappeared on us. We don't know what happened to him. And this buck showed up. <clears throat> it was a buck that I was kind of familiar with. Was not living on the farm. He had shown up twice last year in daylight on camera both on the red moon we got one more red moon in january went over there on the 13th and killed him and just a you know, 181 inch giant massive brows all kinds of beating on the bases just a beautiful heavy heaviest rack can't believe how heavy this dense this thing is but just an old war horse big heavy deer i mean can barely get my hand around the third circumference on that deer. But I'll be taking that back to Illinois this year to get that mounted. Alaskan moose, I shot that 20 some years ago. It was a, basically a self-guided drop camp hunt. Went in and spotted like 20 bulls from the plane. And that was the first one that we could get close to with the plane. A buddy of mine dropped me off, set up a spike camp, and waited till the next day because you can't hunt on the uh, same day that you fly. You know, slid down to the river, and it sounded like dinosaurs down there, the racket they were making. But I actually got within 30 yards of him when I shot him with my rifle. I could have could have shot him with a bow, but uh, my buddy didn't want me going in there by myself bow hunting because there was too many grizzlies. But it's a Boone and Crockett moose, 63 and a half inches. And then this is my biggest elk to date from New Mexico three or four years ago, right at 370. Just, uh, that was a lifetime achievement for me. I've been elk hunting my whole life and I'd missed one the year before the, pretty close to that size on the same ranch and was fortunate enough that I got an invite to go back, shot that bull and I'll just never forget that night either. Hearing that thing coming off the mountain, screaming, chasing cows and coming right by me. We got some incredible footage of that hunt, but just a uh, world-class elk. And then these are a couple of my biggest bears. I've actually shot three black bear up in northern Saskatchewan that are all right around 20 and a half inches, just shy of Boone and Crockett, which is 21. It's such a tough animal to kill. I'm ate up with bear hunting. I love bear hunting up there, especially northern Saskatchewan, because up there, those animals still think they're at the top of the food chain and they have virtually no fear of people so it, uh, it might look like they're a little tame on video but it creates a situation where you get close really close to these animals and when they're not scared of you i've been in a few situations up there that i'd rather not relive there you guys have it this was adam hayes whitetail cribs next week we're headed all the way to indiana to visit with josh telker of before the echo and you get to check out his exclusive look at his trophy room. See you next Saturday.